<laughs> Dimitri! Hello! Oh. Hi! <laughs> how are you? Wait, you said you said you don't know how to work this. Is have you gone live before? I have, but you know, usually like you can request it and like do things like that. When did I I broke it last. I broke it last last night. I don't know when it happened. But yeah, you know, usually you can oh. request to do that with people, but yeah, there's no I request know. button. I'm looking for my It's my, okay. I got you. My mug. I found you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I brought so I have my mug. What what's gonna be in your mug today for this conversation? Okay, so we're gonna get some. This is this is. I just I just did this yesterday. This is my oh wrong, okay. wrong cabinet wrong cabinet. This is my wine my my, my mug. My my. Oh my, my tea gosh! You have a whole tea like collection. I need more. What's the, what's, like the tea by, what's the tea for today? We're gonna go with tension tamer. We're a little tense. <laughs> Are you saying we have tension? No, 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 no. I'm a tense person. And we're going to go with some throat coat. Oh, throat coat is good. I've used, I've used that, like, when I've had back-to-back -back events. Mm -hmm. And that just so good. Yeah, I feel well, like okay, I talk so too much. It's like... But you're... A... So I want everyone to know it is 9 a.m. where you're at. And yes. It's, like, morning tea time and i'm so happy that you're starting your day with us and that we are um enjoying this friday together i like i miss your energy and i love seeing you put out more of you matter merch and like conversation during this time mm -hmm. so i would love if you can kind of give us a a little catch up of where you're at and how you're taking care of yourself and kind of immersing yourself in this message well, i'm taking care of myself poorly but we're working on it <laughs> <laughs> um you know it's a very like uh, different time like we've never faced things like this before and so yeah i know like the the the, the, the not not the pressure but like the uh let me sit you up I should take this hoodie off. Cause it's Hi. <laughs> it's a very oh, like. Do you have uh, your hoodie sprayed? Do I have my hoodie sprayed? Framed, framed. Yeah, they're right here. That is a brilliant idea. <laughs> Thank you. Adam, he has all of his hoodies framed. Like, all. are you watching? Isn't that amazing? That's I, so cool. We should do that. Feel it on my shirt. It's favorite. okay. I have a stain too. Yeah, I see, when I before I joined, I seen you say that. Um, but yeah, it's a very like challenging time because like I know a lot of people look to me for like guidance and things like that. And and as much as I know, I'm just like as much as I'm aware of the fact that I'm just a human, a 22 year old. I also am aware of the fact that like I have things to say and I have like power behind my words and I have a platform. And so I've been like tirelessly to a point using my platform to the point where like. There's days where I, 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 once I'm done with that and once I'm done, like, doing all the things I have to do, whether it's, like, work or whether it's, like, checking in on my friends or, like, checking in on, like, just fans that are, like, in the, the front lines of protesting or who have lost parents, like, COVID. There's, like, a lot of things going on. Um, I realized, like, exactly. I, I felt very depleted. And so, like, as of recently, like, the, the, the past few days, I've been figuring out, like, what fills me back up? Like, what can I do that gives me energy and, and, and it allows me to keep going trying to figure out that balance of like not just continuing to give 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 but like also how can i give as well as like have energy for myself have energy for like my parents and have energy yeah. for my well because you can't give from an empty cup and i think that that's like the very common trend or or point of conversation that we've been having with a lot of our friends lately too and and have been feeling that on a level so it's just like and sometimes it feels like it's almost too like by the time you realize that you're empty it's too late and you yeah. really like burnt out and yeah. so I've, all that it feels and this is so this is like the thing that i've i've learned and i've realized it's not like a good thing or a bad thing but <laughs> so like when we're doing real like when we, i felt like really good and i was and i like my head felt clear and i was getting things done i was like on top of my stuff and i had a routine and all of this stuff and then when like things hit 
and they never hit once. It's like something hits and then something else hits and then something else happens and you're yeah. going through all of that. It's almost like your body freezes up and you can't continue doing the things that took care of your took care of you. So you kind of like have built this reserve of I've been like doing all of these things that make me feel good or make me happy and then now I'm like stuck and I and I can't it's like so hard to go back to that place where you're taking care of yourself even in the moments that get really hard or you feel really empty. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. And like you kind of feel guilty. You know, you kind of feel guilty for yeah. that. Because your problems seem really like minuscule compared to like everything else that's going on. So like even if you know you need to take care of yourself, you kind of like ignore it because you're comparing what you're going through versus like what's going on in the world, what's going on with like people you know and things like that. Yeah. I mean, so Brene Brown, who's this amazing psychologist, and I love her. I mean, I, I, have you heard of her? Brene Brown? Okay. So you would, I think you would like her. So she talks a lot about vulnerability and shame. And one of the things that she talked about early on when COVID happened is comparative suffering and basically how it doesn't do us any good to, uh, to like not feel our feelings all the way through and let ourselves feel bad about situations. Like just because there are other situations that are worse, like that still doesn't take away from your experience and you still have to go through that. Otherwise you end up just repressing everything. And then it's like, it comes out in worse ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. Cause like I've experienced definitely lately too, like where like there's, misplaced like anger or hurt into like other situations that are like uh, like realistically like when i view it after the, the situation i'm like that didn't deserve that like effort i mean that energy or like that amount of hurt but it's a accumulation of other things like building up and me not like expressing it or like acknowledging it yeah that's so true like so so what are some, if you're comfortable sharing, what are some things that you learned, either learned about yourself in the last couple of months or the last few months, or that you gained, like, that you realized you gained resilience in? Can you repeat that for me? The so what part. are, so either, what are, what's something that you've learned about yourself during this, like, the last few months, or what is, like, one way that you've become more resilient because of the things that have been happening? Uh, one thing I learned is I, I don't know how to be alone. Being alone scares me. <laughs> and the reason I like that I've, like with becoming aware of that I don't like being alone, the thing that I've learned is with being alone, why it scares me is because like I have a lot of thoughts at once. Like a lot of them. And yep. it, like when <laughs> when you were texting me like could confirm that we were supposed to do like 9 a.m and i'm like yeah uh i'm gonna be up i was gonna say i'm gonna be up because i haven't signed and i'm usually awake but i was like let me not say that that's kind of heavy right now but <laughs> but yeah like no alone, that's real yeah definitely definitely and being alone is just like a part of that like uh well insomnia is a part of that like uh the ability to like to be at peace and to stop like thinking for a moment and to like allow myself to rest. And I've seen that pattern and everything, whether it's like my work, like even when we do like the hoodie drops and things like that, and like we're done with like once we're done with it, I'm or be before we're done with it, I'm thinking of like what can we do next and how does everything else work and like what do we do next and all these like I'm always thinking and I'm always trying to like figure out something else. I never take that moment to like breathe it in and like enjoy it even if it's nothing to enjoy like just taking a moment to like have a day you know like even when i have my days like where i'm just like watching cartoons and things like that i'm also like thinking of work i'm also thinking of like how can i make my mom's life better how can i make someone else's life better how can i like oh right. do this or do this for a friend and things like that and it's like yeah it's always something happening and so like the thing that i've been trying and not failing in but it's definitely like a i know i won't achieve it over like you know in, over a day is that patience with myself and that um knowing that i can take like baby step i can take a day off i you know have moments of stillness and things like that and, and that doesn't mean anything's wrong you know like a lot of times when i'm not working i feel like i'm 
failing. I feel like I'm useless. I feel like I'm not moving forward, you know, especially because of COVID. There's not a lot of work happening besides the work I create for myself. And yep. <laughs> and it, 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 it can make you feel like you're not doing anything. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I can tell you that like I have felt every single feeling that you have just shared and it's been heightened and I would say the things that I've learned or the things that have given me comfort is like one, knowing that we like knowing that we are absolutely not alone because so like every single it's so funny because people will text and check in on you and all of this stuff. And I like don't even hold back anymore when somebody asks, how are you? Because I know that they're asking and they're going through the same thing or they're going through something too. So I'm just like, I'm just going to be real with you because I know that if I do that, you won't feel like you're the only one. And I think that that's yeah. like that level of transparency and openness is so, um, it's just like so helpful, especially right now. The other thing that I've learned you know, because I am, I'm very, I'm one that like, like similar to you, I have to be working. And right now, especially the last few months, like the only work that people like you and I are getting is the work that we're creating ourselves. Mm -hmm. And like, thank, like, and being supported by, you know, our audience and like our team, essentially, and the people who, um, who have been there for us. But it's like, really hard because you're in, in this like position where your your entire moment in this life is in your hands and so, and 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 we don't ever have like sometimes you don't have that full level of confidence to be like oh I know like I know what's best for me and it's funny I was watching this webinar yesterday with um, Seth Godin who's like one of the world's best marketers and he was saying how in this time the people that are going to emerge are managers and like versus leaders and managers are people who like manage things like the tasks that come at hand and then they just do the thing that they know that they're supposed to do the thing that's always worked and leaders are going to be the people who emerge like don't know what they're doing like they don't know oh We're back. I it literally just said, it literally just said Demetrius Harmon left, and I was just like, that's sad. No, it was like, why did he? Leave? Thank you for going live with Nor. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um. Okay, but the managers. What I was saying was, so there are going to be like managers, like people who manage situations, and then there's going to be leaders, and the leaders who emerge are people who like who are just who are good people who who want to like step up and take responsibility in a time where there is no straight responsibility to take because nobody knows what the right thing to do is mm -hmm. and takes that responsibility and says, follow me. I don't know exactly where I'm going, but I'm going to try my best to do to like make good decisions, but I'm going to just stand up right now and take some type of responsibility. And I think that we're seeing, you know, people who are showing up in this moment. And I think that people are going to remember the, those who showed up and, and even if they didn't have the answers or they didn't know exactly what they were doing, they, they still were like, we, okay, we got this, like, we got this team. We can get through this together. We need each other for this moment versus like just standing still and waiting for somebody else to like make you feel better. And that's not going to happen. So it's just like, how do we become better leaders. And I think that brings us to, you know, your, your campaign of you matter and knowing that you matter, but believing you matter and then believing that you have it in you to push people forward, including yourself and being able to show up for yourself in a time that it's hard to show up for yourself. You know, mm. I think that's like, it's funny to think of, cause I, ha I have like the struggling with, um, like as a you know, because we make clothes. And I got caught up in this idea of, like, how can I make, like, what other clothes can I make? How other, like, how can I, like, not compete, but catch up to, like, other clothing brands that I know. And then I realized, like, this is, 
this is not supposed to just be a clothing brand. Like, this is not the end all be all for this entire entity matter. Like, it's not supposed to just be hoodies and maybe sweatpants and then like where, like the whole reason I started You Matter was to create this um, environment, create this like, uh, you know, community. And, and, and I, I, hoodies was the easiest way for me to do it because if you wear, like everyone wears clothes, you know what I'm saying? And so at the point, like I wanted, to, like when I did You Matter University, like I did You Matter University so we could do scholarships. And and no one know, like no one knew that when I did it, but like it, like I was like how I I didn't know how to do it, you know what I'm saying? But I did it just because I believed that I could. And now this year that's the, that's the plan to like team up with like Scholarly or something like that, and, and and give out scholarships for people who are deserving of it, whether they're like they have the um the academics for it, but like they have the passion, you know what I'm saying? Like things like that. As far as like how can we make everyone believe that like you don't have to just specifically be this clean cut 4.0 student you know to reach these opportunities or you don't have to write this incredible um essay about why you want to go to college because you may not even like really be sure about why you want to go to college but you may have like a very strong passion for the career that you want to choose you know like or how can i like fund these people's mm -hmm. dreams like because i didn't go to college and i my lowest gpa was like a 1.6 i think my highest was like a 2.2 you know what i'm saying so like i didn't go to college and i don't even know like if i could have went to the colleges that i like wanted to be at but a lot of people don't know that and a lot of like the people that follow me and like a lot of people that like um look up to me may be in those same situations or like a lot of times when i'm doing things i'm thinking how can i not inspire but reinforce the idea well i guess inspire <laughs> Uh, reinforce this idea that you know you, you don't have to be all of these things to be successful you don't have to be all these things to be great you don't have to be all these things to be seen you know yeah I mean absolutely I mean I think that that's a great avenue and creating the community and getting people to realize that this is for them too is so important and so what like, if you were to describe the community that you've built, how would you describe them? It's so inclusive. It's so crazy. It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> because um, I think, like, every walk of life that you can imagine is included in my... And I don't want to say it's mine, you know, but to, I guess, to lay claim to it in my community. Because, you know, you have... Cause I'm, I'm, I, I grew up in Detroit, so that's like a, a ton of black people, and like every type of black person. You know, you have like the ones that grew up in the hood, and you have the, like the tech ones, and you have like just the those who don't like identify as anything are just black people. And then you have I grew up, I like went to school in Dearborn, and so it's a bunch of Arab kids, and you know you got Yemen's, and you got like, <laughs> <laughs> you got hijabis, and you don't have hijabis. Like you have like when I do meetups in Dearborn if there's so many different like um different types of Arabs you know and, and, and Muslims and then when I come to LA there's Mexicans and there's Asian people and like you know like there's and then when I go to New York there's all the different boroughs like there's so many different type of people but then like when we're together it's one like unified uh voice you know like they all they like I've I've, I've literally seen like them interact with each other as if they knew each other for years. Like I've seen people leave meetups. I've seen people leave events as if that's amazing. It's crazy. <laughs> and I, and that's my but, favorite. But what is it that why, what is their, what is their level of commonality that when two strangers who meet up in a part of your community, what is, what is the unsaid thing that's like, we know, like we know, and that's why we can just jump into this. It's like a, <laughs> it's so so with you matter it's like whenever you see someone wearing you matter and you don't know that person it's kind of like maybe you've been through a lot of things in your life <laughs> and i have to we don't have to talk about it but we're here type of thing and so like usually at meetups it's like got it they already understand that they've been through a lot in life whether they talk about it or not but they understand that they're like a certain type of person you know what i'm saying like it's, it's almost like in a sense of like uh like uh political parties but not as political um 
if you're if you're like if someone that votes for Trump, you look at the person like I I don't know you, but I know what kind of person you are because you stand by these things. And so for like my I meetups, love like, that. <laughs> for my meetups is like when you come, it's like okay, you you like meet. And meat stands for a certain type of things, and meat doesn't stand for certain types of things. Cause like you know, like what kind of things I allow fly. Like I'll see people, like like I'll joke and quote tweet people, and like have like I'm very conversational. Like I'm very like to me, I'm a regular person. And so sometimes like the people that follow me don't understand like my sarcasm runs, and I'm joking, and they're like gang up on a person. I'm like relax, like this doesn't need to be that. And so I'm very like conversational with people, and so like the people that follow me have kind of like. I I found people that like adapt and uh, have those same qualities. So like they they're really nice to each other. Like they dance with each other. Like I've had skating events and they, people fall and you see people like stopping to help each other up. Like you know like you I dropped my phone at a <laughs> at my skating event. I didn't know I dropped it and somebody like skated up and gave it back to me. Like it, it's such a good community and and that's what I look forward to most. is like seeing it expand like consistently like beyond a skating event beyond a, a meetup like what does this look like when i have a, a building and, and people can come to this after school you know what i'm saying like we have teachers and we have you know like things that they can learn from it's not just like the the actual like you know like how am i learning how to do algebra too but like the things of like how do you balance a checkbook or how do you use photoshop and like these are free class things like that like that kids can use to like expand on the ideas that they already have you know and 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 given the re is that already. the goal yeah it's one of them that's that's awesome <laughs> so so people who people who are part of your community can expect that there's a level of empathy because they know that you probably have gone through things and it's not even that because it's like everybody has gone through things but it's you've acknowledged that you've gone through things and that you want to like be around like-minded people because we because you recognize we've all, all gone through things so it's easy to do that when you're in the community and you're all together and you're there but what about and this is like the actual like the act of really believing that you matter what are the practices that you have adopted in the moments where it's hard to believe that and your community, like it, and it's not something that you can get from your community because you have to do that work yourself. Me specifically or people in general? Mm -hmm. You. <laughs> so um, I've been going through a hard time because like I have a, I have a disconnected relationship with my father and you know like just in general with those things like parents are very like key to us like because they raised us you know and so like a lot of parts of me um if he invalidates like my feelings and things like that it means a lot more compared to like a stranger or like a relationship things like that and Absolutely. i do this i like i go in the bath i've been doing this recently i always do it but now i have like a I can <laughs> go in the tub I'll show you actually. It's a very peaceful room. It's my peace I room. Love it's, it. it's my peace room. That's amazing. My friend is staying in it right now, so it's kind of things everywhere. I got this giant bean bag. <laughs> and then I have Yes to the bean bag. Yes to the bean bag. I have this Persian rug. It's really record. soft. I got the record That's player, I got music. And it's usually a speaker, and I have a tub, and I just I soak the tub. I got the bath. I got the soap. I mean, not the soap, the the, the bubbles. Doctor, and I have yes. a. Uh, oh my god. I have a. What is this called? And the diffuser. Diffuser. Yeah, I got the I got the oil diffuser, and so I just put the oil in. I put a lot of lavender oil because it relaxes you, and I play a little bit of music on soft. Yeah. Uh, some Charlotte Day Wilson. You know, just get get just get that going. I, I relax and I, I think I just spend time like thinking, you know, like spend time like how do I feel about this? Why do I feel this way about it? Um, and just like sorting through it and then letting it go. And like a lot of times I have a, I have a bad like habit of not <laughs> forming habits, I suppose. And 
like with meditating, that's one of them. But whenever like I am going through things, I, I'm it's 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 something that I do like a, a forming a habit of like taking a bath, being there for like 30, 40 minutes and then taking yes. a shower and just spend that time like to myself to like think through everything, think why do I feel this way? And then even if I don't come up with the conclusion, like at least I spent that time like thinking about it and knowing that like I, I care. My mom's here. Hi. My, I think my mom is too. <laughs> <laughs> so hi mom i okay so your bathtub with the diffuser and the dr teals literally looks exactly like ours except i add candles and it is oh, like like if candles. i'm if i call I candles too look yes yes down. if i am having a bad day and I call my mom about it, she'll be like, did you take your bath today? Like, did you take a bath? Because she knows like, that's the thing that's gonna like make me feel better. But okay, so what you were saying about just like sitting in the tub and you know, thinking and all this stuff. So I'm going to share with you something that I learned this past week. And it's been really helpful. Because you were saying like, you ask yourself, okay, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this way? Um, and is that, do you, are you like aware of the kind of like questions that you ask yourself to get, like to process feelings? Mm. So, okay. So I didn't know that your body physically feels an emotion in that, like it, it, it only feels it physically for 90 seconds. So if you let your body feel, so say like, you're you have like a pit in your stomach or you you're feeling really tense or whatever it is if you are able to acknowledge i am feeling angry i am feeling sad and then you let yourself feel it instead of getting into your head about it and exacerbating it if you can just meditate on that feeling and you let it process through your body the feeling releases and you are are like if you don't let yourself go through that process, which most of us grew up not doing that, your body represses the feeling and it stores in your physical body. So wherever you're feeling that tension, so if you feel like tension in your neck in like your shoulders and your back, like which is where I do because that's where I get tense. All right. And now it's like always, 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 yes, exactly. It's always tight. So it's just like, I've just learned now if you're if you're able to like just get through that and the way you can get to that point is doing four um four by four breaths so you do four breaths and each of them is inhale four seconds hold and then really exhale four seconds and when you're doing that breath you're supposed to concentrate on where you're feeling the emotion so that you're sending the oxygen to that place so that you're able to release the feeling and you're able to process it it's like yeah. Now yeah. I want to be. I can practice this. Yeah. It's like, um, it's interesting. It's like wild when you hear, when you hear like, you know, science and mental health kind of come hand in hand. And you're like, you can literally hack this. Like, you can hack your mind. You can master your mind. You can master your emotions. We just actually have to like do the work. And that is doing the work, is being able to like, get through that whole process. And, and like you said, ask yourself, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling it? And then also, like, is there truth to this, like, thing that I'm telling myself right now? Like, yeah. is it actually true? Can I know for sure that it's true? <laughs> That's my biggest problem. <laughs> so, no, I'm there with you. I know. It's so much easier said than done, but it's a practice. I love that we're both drinking out of our mugs right now. <laughs> a lot of times I'll tell my friends about things, and I'll be like, as I'm telling them, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. I made this up. Okay. And they'll be like. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> you talk it out to help you get there? Yeah, sometimes I talk it out. And, like, it's not even a point of, like, talking it out. Sometimes I'm talking it out because I'm like, this is what's happening. I, I just want to share it with people because I'm like, understand why I feel this way and as I'm talking to them I'm like this doesn't make sense and I'll see their faces yeah. and they're like, that doesn't make sense you made that up I I get that so for somebody said that they were going to try the four by four breath technique 
I just want to also say that it only works if you're able to only focus on your breath and not think about anything else. You have to give attention to the place in your body that you're trying to send that breath. And if you are able to do that for 32 seconds without thinking about anything except for the breath, you recalibrate your entire body. You recalibrate your brain and your body so that it calms down. So good luck. It's hard, but good luck. <laughs> I feel like this is like a good, uh, this is like a good life hack session of feeling better going into the weekend. Yeah, we definitely need it before the weekend because that's usually when people mess themselves up. Yeah. Well, what do you like? What are you grateful for? Like, my mom. what? I mean, my mom. Yeah, same. <laughs> it's good to you. I just wanted to say that. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Yes, our moms, but also, what are you grateful for that was really hard? Um. this appreciation I have for life, even though like a lot of times I'm very like reckless and like of my life. Cause for a really long time, I didn't see myself being to the, you know what I'm saying? And so like, I don't know what to do as a 22 year old. I just saw myself being like 15, like 16. I, I didn't see past that, but there's a lot of times where like, you know, like with my, and, and, and even though right now it's, not even right now, but, like, sometimes it's people give me that appreciation. Like, my, I'm about to have a niece. My brother's having a, a baby. And, like, things like that. And I'm like, oh, thank you on his back. And, you know, like, it's like that where it's like, oh, there's these good moments that come and they, they stay. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times, like, I think of life as, like, fleeing good moments and fleeing bad moments, you know. But there's these good moments that stay, you know, and they actually do stay. And I don't have to think about like why well not why but like I don't have to wait in anxiety of like when would they be gone you know I appreciate them yeah. I appreciate them. or I think about like moments where like I, I, I live in California and all my family lives in Michigan and there's times where like I, I come back home my, my nephew is the worst child I have ever met like he's such a problem child and when he sees me he's like oh Kamiji and he like hugs me and I'm like oh you're nice you're not a nice person to anybody and you're nice to me. This is great, you know. Or just like the the ability I have to to do things that I want to do, you know. Like I'm a, aware of um, the position I'm in that a lot of people don't have, and like the 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 power that I have that a lot of people want, but you know I have it naturally, and I I have a voice, and I have things that I can say, and, and it's not just my voice that I should be using. I should using this voice to amplify the voices of others that are not heard, but they should be, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm yeah. just grateful. Like, the, the fact that I'm grateful and the fact that I'm, like, uh, happy about the things that I have took a really long time. A really long time to get to. Do you have, like, a, a, a good memory or a good moment or a, a place that you always go back to to, like, kind of pull yourself out of things sometimes? I went to Hawaii for my 21st birthday and I have this video. I'll send it to you. I have this video where I was, <laughs> what is your, what is your sign? What sign are you? Sagittarius. Okay. You're fired. That's funny that you like tubs. Yes. Um, my mom does the same thing. Wait, that's why I like tubs. Is that a thing? No, 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 no. no. You're fired. Why, I, I'm a water sign. So like, it makes sense. I'm a fish. I'm a Pisces. I'm, we actually talked about this yesterday. I'm fire, but I think I border water. I'm rewatching Avatar Last Airbender. And ah, I think I border man. water now. <laughs> is it giving you joy during quarantine? It is. I'm watching uh, Korra. So I'm watching the other. We movie. just finished Korra. I, so we finished rewatching Korra and it's, have you seen it? No. <laughs> Oh, okay. This is your first time watching it? Okay, fine. We finished Cora. I'm just saying, I think that Cora was one of the best shows to watch during this time because it feels so relevant and there's so much wisdom. Yeah, there's a lot. Like, the first season where, like, the anti, I'm like, this is, this is a lot. <laughs> it was very political. It's also and like, it's like what's happening outside of our window right now. Exactly. And there's the spirits. And I'm like, this is, this is a lot. This is a lot. I just started season two. But yeah, I'm, I'm a I Pisces. love season two is my or book two is my favorite one. Okay, go into the signs. Yeah, yeah. My mom always texts me like whenever I take a bath, she's like, 
You always love water. You always love being in a tub. <laughs> like, yeah, mom. But I can't swim. Tub is the best thing I can. <laughs> um, it's okay. It's not. What did I completely sidetracked our conversation? I actually was your sign, but we were talking about something prior to that. Oh, Hawaii. Yeah, um, no, I'm really. Yes, Hawaii. <laughs> And so when I turned 21, I had a huge birthday party. And then the next day we went to Hawaii. And I've never been to Hawaii before. I always wanted to go. So me, my, I have three brothers, but me and my two brothers and my mom and my best friend, Angelo, went to Hawaii. And after we like unpacked everything, switched into, I don't, even, I don't think I switched into pants. I think I still had on my, my plain pants. And I took my socks off and I started walking in the grass. <laughs> and I just felt so connected with everything. I just felt fine. Like the the, the sun was setting. You could see the, the the ocean from like where we were at. You could see mountains. And I made a video, and I was like, "I'm in Hawaii, and I'm happy." And when I said that, I meant it. Like like you know you know sometimes you're like, "I'm happy." It's like, "All right, cool." But I really meant it. I was like, "I'm happy. I'm happy. This is great. <laughs> this is great." I was like, "Sometimes life, sometimes life be horrible, but right now it's not." And, we're fine. We're good. You know, we, we appreciate it. And like, I think for like a really long time, like from being in Hawaii to like, I don't think I didn't feel good until like April. My birthday is March 1st. So like for that whole month, I was just okay. I just riding that wave. And so do you go back to that video? Yeah, I go back to that feeling. Like even when I see the video on like my like timeline or things like that, because people like reposting and like, I'm just posting it so I can have, uh, <laughs> I can feel good. But even when I think about being in Hawaii, like, you know, we, I did a lot of things. Like, I'm scared of heights. We did parasailing. Like, we went parasailing. And I'm terrified of heights. But it was That's so awesome. Beautiful. It was so beautiful. I was so scared. I was screaming. But, like, when you, when you, it's like, it was crazy because it's this moment when you're going up, you know, you're growing up and you're screaming, but then you, you stop. And everything stops. Like, everything is just still. You know, like, you, you stop screaming, everything's still, and you look down, and it's just, like the bluest water I've ever seen in my life. Like everything's just blue. And there's this like overwhelming like sense of peace and you just appreciate it. You just look around. And when it brought us down, I was like, why is this happening? Why are you bringing us down when it's there for you? You know, like, and, and for me to be, I'm oh. terrified of heights. <laughs> like I, I cannot express it. Enough. I'm, I'm so scared of heights. And just being up there was the most people think I had. Like, like it was like this, like this how blue the water was. Like the entire water, and I made my parents. I made my mom do it. My mom was scared too. My mom, and my brothers were scared. That I'm. That makes me so happy to know that you all did it, and also just like that feeling of having your feet in grass and sand. There's um. Have you ever heard of the concept earthing? Yeah, my therapist tells me to do it a lot. Yeah. So for those of you who who aren't familiar, like our bodies carry a positive electric charge because of all of the electricity we're taking in. And then the earth carries a negative one. So if you're like able to just keep your feet in grass or sand for 20 minutes, it like helps neutralize your body. And that's why you feel like so much calmer when you're out in nature and you're like actually in it. That's the thing I feel like I really miss, like living in New York and not having that in the city is just... It, like, makes you, uh. <laughs> it's weird because, like, I just start doing start doing that out here. I just start going, like, to the beach and things like that where I would, like, go out and be in the sun. But it's. Well, I mean, what's, I'm, what's. I'm a barefoot person. <laughs> <laughs> so you just need to, like, cover your actual floor in grass and sand. Hmm? Just pretend like that. I'm a, I have a roof. I'm a good roof, all grass. All sand. Oh, thing. That's so nice. Okay, Meech, what's something you want us to take away into the weekend that's been on your heart lately? <laughs> <laughs> um, that you're worthy of everything you feel like you should have, you know. Um. Like with my relate, like this is this is stemming from my relationship with my dad. Like my mom is this anchor. My mom is my mom has four children. I'm I'm the fourth, and four. Um, <laughs> and my dad has just me, and he's raised these the other three. And for a really long time, like my dad was very like, uh, and I don't talk about it a lot. Like 
Like, I don't talk about it. Like, even though I talk about a lot of things on social media, there's a lot of things I don't talk about. Like, my dad was, like, my abuser. My dad used to hit me. He used to hit my mom. My dad used to, like, invalidate the things that I was going through as far as, like, mental health, you know? Even though, like, my first, like, idea of suicidal ideation was from him, you know, like, and just never, like, allowed me to, like, ex not even experience it because you don't want your, your kid going through these things, but he never validated it, you know? And so, yeah. for a really long time, um, I felt like, what's wrong with me? You know, like, I was like, I, I, what am I doing that's wrong that doesn't, like, wh what do I need to do and change and fix to, to, to earn his love? You know, and then that carried on to, like, relationships. It carried on, like, friendships where, I, like, I'm, like, overdoing it. Just, like, prove that I'm worthy. You know, like, things like that. Like, a, a worthy of someone's love, of someone's appreciation and now like i more so recently like i'm realizing like i am with or without these things i'm worthy of love you know like i'm worthy of being treated right i'm worthy of appreciation i'm worthy of every whatever it is that i want i'm worthy of it because i'm willing to give it as well like i don't need to win someone over i i need to be a good person and i believe that i am and if if i'm not meeting the standards that someone else has um what they need, then, then that's, that's a different conversation. But I don't need to, like, buy someone's love. I don't need to convince someone to love me. I, I'm, I'm worthy of it, you know what I'm saying? And also, like, the sense of forgiveness, but, like, not forgiveness in the sense of, like, you know, like, there's, there's a, for, like, forgive and move on, but, like, the forgiveness for myself, you know, like, like, yep. how you were saying, you know, like, the, the four breaths, like, forgiving for the sake of, being okay with me, you know, like our relationship, me and his relationship are, are, is very off, like it's very severed, but forgiving so that I can be okay, you know what I'm saying? Like forgiving so I'm not stuck in that place, forgiving so my <laughs> shoulders aren't aren't tense, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and forgiving yeah. so that I can, I forgiving myself and forgiving him and, and not blaming him for like the things and, and it, just accepting him for who he, who he is and who he's shown me he can be and like, and that moves on to every other like situation and relationships that I've like had with people, you know, like forgiving these people for things that they may not know they're doing and may not know that they're causing, but I have to forgive them. So I'm not holding that negative energy inside of myself. Wow. It, it's really surreal to hear you say that in the beginning of quarantine. First of all, thank you for sharing that because I know so many people are learning and also relate and like including myself. And I remember in the beginning of quarantine, I dreamt like three day, three nights in a row, I dreamt about like three different people that I don't talk to or like I have a relationship with. And in my dream, I was forgiving them. And I woke up like realizing that I had actually forgave them and it wasn't because I wanted to forgive them and that what they did was okay, but I forgave them because I didn't, I like, I had to do that for myself so that I knew that I deserved that. Like I deserved to not feel the hurt that like the pain that comes with those relationships or like whatever you've stored in your body. And one of the ways that I learned like how to clearly do so uh, my friend taught me because we were having a conversation about trust. And I said to her, I, like she brought somebody up and I said, oh, so do you not trust him? And she said, it's the, the most unhealthy thing you can do is not trust someone like for yourself is to not trust someone. You should trust everyone because otherwise you will go around your life looking like thinking like somebody has another motive, thinking that they feel a type of way about you, thinking like you always have this like anxious perception energy that's going. She said, trust everyone, but pay attention to red flags. And when they do something that crosses your boundary or that is harmful, then recognize that that is them showing their character. It has nothing to do with you. Mm. And I think when I realized, like, when people hurt you or do something that's harmful and you realize, okay, that's not about me, that's about them, 
and I know me and I'm good. And that person is just showing me them. And, and obviously like, especially when it comes to parents or, and dad specifically, I think that that's like, there's so much unmanaged trauma and unmanaged emotions. And it's like, it's like you end up having to learn and realize even when their actions are not okay, that they never got a chance to do the work the way that you get to do the work. And so they still like, they're still carrying all of this trauma from their own life that has nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that too. Like I acknowledge that. And like, uh, like I talk about it in my lectures a lot of like, you know, we're the most, we're like one of the first most pro progressive generations of just like, we have a lot of resources. We have the internet. We have this internet that makes us feel a community, whether they're miles away or they're like next to us, you know, like our parents only had the people, the, the neighbor next door, the two neighbors next door and their family, you know, and the people they go to school with. So like, usually they're pretty like-minded people. And and if they're not agreeing, like the, the things that they're instilled into them are like usually pretty negative things and they don't get to talk about certain things. And, and you know, that, that, that makes them grow up and, and raise children that, they don't validate their feelings and things like that. So us as a generation, like, though we're very progressive, we also have to, like, forgive our parents for not knowing any better because they were raised that way. Yep. You know? And it's not, they, they say, it's, it's okay. I always compare it to religion, like, because um, religion, like, you know, like, it's, because <laughs> I grew up around a lot of Muslims, you know, but I also am, am Black, so, like, a lot of Black people are Christian and they always like, like ah, oh, and they're always like shaming Muslims, and I'm like, the, like you know, but that the way that they're brought up is to think that that's the right way, like that's like the right way, you know what I'm saying? And so like, yep. for parents, like if you're comparing it to religion, like they're thinking like the way that they were brought up, they don't see a problem with it, they don't see a problem with invalidating how we feel, they don't see a problem with saying yep. depression is real, you know, like things like that. so. That's like something that they were they were from the moments that they were, you know, these these babies that soak up all this information, someone fed this information to them. And so it's, would you rather continue living your life like in this wrong way or would you undo years of things that were your reality of like who you were? And it's a lot, it's, it takes a really strong person to undo all of those wrong things for the better yeah. of the, their generation. That's so true. It's so true. And also, it's like on us to accept that it's not our responsibility to change your parents or to change people's behavior, because like, you like, you're not even at the same place. And, and so you trying to like, be like, you need to work on it, you need to whatever that in itself is toxic. And it's just like, you can only do what you can do to help yourself. And then like, set your boundaries and protect yourself and like and do what like maintain the relationship the way you see fit but not feel the pressure of having to change someone because you're not going to be able to change them unless they want to change themselves and also like we i don't know we can lead by example by just being like doing the work and being okay and something my friend told me the, the other day that really stuck with me and never thought about this but she said like idea like this like if your parents did a good job with you or tr like did their best with you ideally like you're supposed to end up better than them you know because they were raised by their parents and their parents did the best they could and then they took it another step and then raised us and did the best that they could so ideally like we're supposed to be better than our parents. We're supposed to like, you know, and then, and then if we end up having kids, you pass that on and you want your kids to be better than you. And so it's just like it, that frustration of getting your parents to like a certain point to like, to think a, a, a certain way or to be more open about these things. It's, it's like, it's hard, but also the work that they've done is why you are the way you are. And you're so lucky that you get to be open-minded enough to talk about mental health, to be vulnerable, to share your stories, to help other people. Like, that's amazing. And that's something that you got because of your experience with your parents. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's funny. It's crazy <laughs> to think about. <laughs> no. Yeah, because we are supposed to be like it's like 
Yeah. Well, thank you because this felt like a little nice therapy catch up session. It was on live. Just, it didn't feel like an hour at nine a.m. No, this is awesome. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for your time and for your insight and for your, for your stories, how can we support you in your work? Um, just following me. Cause I, I'm like, as of recently, like things that I post aren't related to me. They're like every, like it's like blasting other people's work. And so like my work mm -hmm. is just the entire things. And as of like the coming, the coming uh, season is about, you know, expansion and things how like I can, expansive talking about like whether it's scholarships or whether it's donations and yeah things like that where that's my favorite thing donations are amazing because because it's crazy because a lot of people can do it and a lot of people don't <laughs> and it's I like i know i know especially like a lot of people who can't who can do it are the ones who don't and then the people who can't are always trying to give more yeah yeah exactly like uh we just donated uh, 100000 to two different organizations based off of the uh, – I started, like, raise money with the Black the Black you Matter. And my mom – like, cause my mom does all this stuff because I'd be in L.A. I mean, I'd be in L.A. And she, like – they was about, like, they both were about to cry, and they were so – like, when I emailed the guy, I'm like, can we, like, meet with you? I can't donate this amount over, like, online. And he was like – I told him the amount. He's like, is that, did you mean to type that? And it's just like the fact that such a, you know, like the, the organizations like this don't receive such support from people that can do it. And no. I, I, I can do it. Still, a, I'm 22. It's still a stretch for me to do it. But <laughs> there's so many people who are blessed in so many different ways that don't do it. And then when they do, it's kind of like a, a tax write off type of thing. And so, yeah, I guess the best way to support me is by following me and seeing how you can support others because that's the whole point of like this cycle, this circle. Love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and I'm so proud of you and thank you again for all of this. Thank you. Thank you for also checking up on me and things during the middle of this and thank you for having me. Always, always. Talk to you soon. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, me. <sighs> that was awesome. Thank you all for tuning in. For everybody who was asking if um, we upload these, we upload these full conversations on at AYS. And then we also upload them on Facebook and YouTube. So this will be up on YouTube if you want to watch it there. Um, and we also have a newsletter uh, that we just launched at nortugori.com slash newsletter. You can, it's in like the link in the bio and I will see you all next week for AYS hour, 12 PM every day. If you have any suggestions for guests or topics that you care about, let me know, but this was awesome. And thank you so much for engaging and commenting. It's like, I feel like we have the best group of people in the best community. Every time we go live, it's like the best com It's like so many conversations happening, but they're all so amazing. So thank you. I appreciate you. Make sure you follow Demetrius, and I will see you all next week. Bye.